So this story, it's not about a fly, but it's still about fishing. It's about an orange bag, and specifically this one. It starts, it starts off, I'm in New Zealand, and suddenly, and I love photographs, and I love bright, funky color stuff, and it looks really good in photographs, and I see that Patagonia has come out with an orange waterproof bag. And I'm like, I want one of them. I want one of them. I tried to order some from the US. Can't get it. So I contact the agent here. I see he's starting to bring some in. But then he tells me, we're not bringing in the orange. You've got no chance, Stu. We're not bringing in orange because nobody in New Zealand will want one and no one will fish with one because it will scare the fish. And I'm like, you know, it's up to him to whatever he perceives, but he knows about his sales. And that's a perception in New Zealand. You wear a bright color that you can't catch a fish, load of rubbish. As far as I'm concerned, obviously I would say that. And so then I point out and says, but I'm asking for one. Can I not get one? Did you just get one in for me? He won't do it. So then I got, and then when I tried overseas to buy one overseas, I couldn't, I, I, for some reason, I tried a few times, and they either didn't have them or they were out, you know what I mean? They were coming in or whatever. There was some confusion. And so I got the shits and went, right, sort it. I won't bother getting one. And I'm, I'm actually going to do this in uh, two parts. Two parts. So second part's coming up now. Well, in a second. So I've given up with the orange bike. I'm in, I'm in, um... I go to US and I go into Canada and Vancouver and that, and I'm trying to write another a future book that no, nobody's seen yet. It's all sort of in the is in the vault, and I've just got to find time to work in it. But it's sort of written. The manuscript's sort of there, the rough one. Anyway, so this is years ago, and I've done that because I'm on a mission. I've also went to the Sage Factory and caught up with a bunch of people I knew and tied flies with them and had a great time. And they were trying to help me there. They realized, they went, man, you've got so many flies, to, you know, and designs. You've got potential to crack the US market with what you've you've got, but it's just not me, you know what I mean? So but they're trying to prod me and say, you know, you've got to meet one of our sales team. But he wasn't there. I met everyone else apart from this one guy. So anyway, says goodbye to them. End of story. I'm up in Vancouver way and I goes into this place and oh my girlfriend at the time she she came over to spend a month or two with me a month I think it was with me whatever and we go to this touristy place and we go into this little bar thing and and bar brewery and it's got a bottle of woolly bugger wine and I'm like on the front it's called woolly bugger wine and I'm like, wow, look at that. The woolly bugger is such a famous fly. I'm going, this woolly bugger wine, how cool is that? But I don't really drink wine. So then I'm like, so I didn't buy it. It was in the, the counter, but I was in awe at it. And it was just bugging me and bugging me. So we went away around and, and, and then when I was driving her back to Vancouver because she's going to fly out from there on the way, took a big detour and says, I need to go and buy that wine, even if I don't drink it. I just want the bottle. I'm so geeky. I just wanted the bottle. I'm going to have to do this in part three parts because I'm over two minutes and I've been told, don't go over two minutes. So I told me. <laughs> okay. So I goes into the place to buy this bottle of Wooly Bugger. And I goes in and I'm looking around and there's, look, there's one sitting and there's heaps of bottles in the cabinet. And, and I ask about it and then they... The staff member looks at it and talks to another one, comes back and says, well, it's the last one, but we'll sell you. So they sell me this bottle and I'm like, yes, yes, we've got a bottle of woolly bugger. So I'm sort of stoked. So we walk along the street and when you're a fishing geek, you just notice things. So I noticed this little sticker on a car, a Sage sticker. Sage is a famous fly rod company in the States, right? But this is in Canada and I noticed a sticker and some. There was just something about it. So on the way back, I see this young couple getting into the car, and I went, oh, I see you do a bit of fishing. I've got a sage sticker. Turns out, he works for Sage, and he's the guy 
that, that other guys at Sage will want me to meet. He's actually up from the US into Vancouver with his girlfriend for a week's holiday. It was just so funny. Anyway, shook his hand. We had a bit of a giggle at that because I knew his his work colleagues. Years later, I'm building up, building my home. I've had to close the shop. I'm building my little home uh, in the town where I live. And I'm trying to operate this machine, this digger. I've never operated one before. In fact, more like clunk, 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 clunk. Because it was an old one and I was shit at driving it and I was just learning. No manual. Just been given the keys and left alone. Somebody jumps the fence this day. Jumps the fence. So I'm not a fly shop or whatever. And it's, you know, it's, it is during the season. I'm walking away. It's a hot day. Guy jumps the fence. And he's got this orange bag under his arm. Turns out. It's the same guy I met in Vancouver and and um, he'd got married. So he's on his honeymoon in New Zealand. He'd already been fishing and he he hadn't contacted me and he was in a bit of a rush. So he's jumped the fence. He's flying out pretty quickly that day. So he's in a rush and he's got this bag. Now, he did not know anything about me loving an orange bag. So he's got this bag. He just says, sorry, I wanted to catch up with you. Shake your hand again, Stu, and, just, and, and uh, sorry we couldn't have a beer. And I was like, oh, man, wow. And uh, and he's got this bag under his arm. I'm like, I wonder, wonder why he's got that. And I, and, I, and I joke with him. I say, is that your fishing bag? You won't catch a fish here in New Zealand with that. And he's laughing because he just caught heaps and he had a great time, which is fantastic to hear. And he's just such a lovely guy. And then he says, well, I'm flying out and I don't need this bag. And I just wondered if you wanted it. So that is... How I got my orange bag, eventually I got it in New Zealand. And I've just travelled around a bit of the world with it. And uh, I love it. <laughs> anyway, that's what happens when you meet lovely people. That's the orange bag story. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your support. Uh, that might be the last story until I drive a bit more and think of something else. <laughs> See ya.